it differentiates wisdom it, it it classifies it in 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 two in two classes there's wisdom that's from above and there's earthly wisdom earthly wisdom is sensual it's demonic Come rain, come sunshine Switch my heart and do you will find There's love for you All I got is love for you Oh yeah, yeah. There's no lie, I will hold you Coffee already poured I was here before Hi You're welcome to Amazing Mind Zambia's first late night show Hope you guys are doing well Hope you're enjoying your Friday. Uh, what do they say? The TGIF. Thank God it's Friday. I believe that's what they say. Look at that. Yeah. I love Friday because it gives me uh, the opportunity to give you this Bible Talks. Yeah. Once again, you're welcome to the show. If you're not subscribed, please subscribe. Hit that uh, bell and share. Subscriptions alone on YouTube. It could be decorations. If you don't hit the bell and... It's an added advantage for you to hit that bell because you'll be notified whenever we upload content. You'll be the first to know when I put up content. Mondays are for Mondays are for political discussions. Uh, Wednesdays are for the educative segment. And this month of November, we've been having medical personnel on the show. We've been having doctors. We had a neurosurgeon. We had a, a doctor from ear, nose, and throat department uh, of our university teaching hospital here in Lusaka. And we had... Uh, a dental surgeon last week Wednesday uh, next week Wednesday we'll be having another medical person in the show to conclude the month of November and next month we'll have a different set of people coming on the show to uh, educate us on different aspects and different things uh, notwithstanding we'll still have rebuttals and history segments and the same old that we used to do on the show before for in-house people, me, Chofia, Suilanji, who still do those things. Uh, but I heard a funny sound. Did you hear that? Yeah. Okay. Anyway, so you're welcome. Hit subscribe and hit that notification bell. So Fridays are for Bible Talks. And today's Friday. We're doing Bible Talks. We are continuing with our series of the gifts of the Spirit. And today we're getting into the first spiritual gift because last week we gave an introduction to the manifestation of the spirit which is the gifts of the spirit and this week we are getting into the first there are nine gifts we listed them down last week we talked about how the gifts of the spirit are specific uh they are not your natural gifts that you call spiritual gifts simply because you're now born again so if you could play football and now that you're born again, it does not mean that it has turned into a spiritual gift. Spiritual gifts are things that you wouldn't do in your natural ability, but they're given to you in a moment to be able to exercise them. And these gifts can grow and they can become something you use whenever you uh, desire to. Um, but it is the Holy Spirit who gives these gifts and your ability to use them depends on how much you've matured, uh, how much you've exercised your senses by reason of use, because we discussed how that our bodies have senses, but our spirits also have uh, senses. And it's important to know this knowledge in order to understand many aspects of dealing with God and his spirit. So the show is available Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays right here on YouTube, uh, 20 hours Central African time. And you can listen to the podcast on Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts, and Spotify. For those that love audio podcasts, as opposed to video, which... I very much love. I never, almost never, I can't say never, but I almost never listen to audio podcasts. I've taken up that now when I, whenever I'm driving, but I prefer video. Yeah, so you're welcome to the show. Um, thank you to all our new subscribers. You're welcome to the channel. We love you guys. I hope you will grow to love me too. Um, the show is, of course, a um, a podcast, a late night show, Zambia's first late night show. We have different segments on the show, political discussions. Uh, as I broke it down for you, we've got biblical discussions 
and we have educative segments, uh, but the show includes uh, entertainment aspects, comedy and whatnot. The show, the show, the full concept of the show will be rolled out slowly. We've been rolling it out slowly. If you begin, we began by airing out the episodes uh, randomly and then we gave them times and days and then we slowly were building up the concept. There's a full concept we are headed towards, uh, but we're building it up slowly. So to get into Bible talks today, the gifts of the spirit or spiritual gifts or the manifestation of the spirit, uh, however you may want to refer to it, I'll read you the first scripture, which is 1 Corinthians chapter 12, uh, verse 7 to 8. But the manifestation of the spirit is given to each one for the profit of all. For to one is given the word of wisdom through the spirit, to another the word of knowledge through the same spirit. Now, the Bible here starts by listing out uh, the gifts or the particular manifestation of the spirit and we talked about how God is the source Jesus is the administrator you catch up on Bible talks we've talked about so much so if you want to understand this you may do some 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 catching up may help you uh, God is the, the the source the operator the one who comes up with the plan and Jesus is the administrator because all power has been given into his hands but the Holy Spirit in this dispensation is the manifester and not just in this dispensation but we've been told on many occasions that the holy spirit is the one that brings to life uh, the will of god what is in the spirit realm he is able to translate into the natural realm and the bible in the book of hebrews tells us that by faith we know that the worlds were framed by the word of god the things which are seen were created by things which are not seen so the things which are not seen are greater they are more real they are realistic they live in the original realm and we that are seen in our own realm live in a created realm so this means that the reality we experience is not the full thing there is a greater reality which is beyond our perception and if you study science they'll tell you that we are three dimensional beings living in a four four dimensional world um, this means that our perception is three dimensional we can understand height uh, we can understand length and we can understand width or what you may refer to as breadth. These are our three dimensional perspectives. Uh, yet the world we live in is four dimensional, height, breadth, um, length and time. Time being the fourth dimension, the fourth dimension rather, which we can't perceive, but we experience it. So time is in this our world, which is a four, four dimensional world. Uh, yet we are three-dimensional beings, so we can experience and perceive the first three dimensions. This is scientific knowledge I'm giving you. Uh, we can perceive the three dimensions, height, breadth, and length, uh, yet we can't perceive the fourth dimension, which is time. But time somehow is a, is a heavy contributor, a heavy um, component and influence to our daily lives. Okay, so time is not something we can perceive, yet time is something that we experience so it's a it's a it's a it's a fourth dimension of our of our livelihoods for those that have studied physics uh, in school you may be familiar with, with what i'm talking about so now the holy spirit is the one that brings uh things from dimensions we cannot see into the dimensions we can perceive so what may be given to us spiritually exists only beyond our perception but it must be brought into manifestation into the perception we can understand it must be boiled down to where we are i i hope that's clear that makes the holy spirit the manifester of those things which are which are spiritual and the bible says in the book of ephesians that god has blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places and on account of this it takes the holy spirit to bring these blessings into the natural uh, realm and so now the manifestation of the spirit is the spiritual characteristics of jesus the spiritual characteristics of god that the holy spirit is bringing into our ability so that we are able to manifest them in this natural realm that we can perceive and um, the first gift list listed here is the gift of word of wisdom 
the Bible here says, For to one is given the word of wisdom by the Spirit, and to another is given the word of knowledge by the same Spirit. So we'll begin by tackling the word of wisdom. What exactly is this gift known as the word of wisdom? What exactly is this gift known as the word of wisdom? So in order to understand the gift, called word of wisdom we may first need to understand wisdom itself and both the world or the dictionary and the bible have described this thing this thing we call wisdom i hope you guys are coffeeed up coffee good for your microbiome um i believe we'll be having a dietitian and nutritionist on the show uh, next Wednesday, I keep hitting the mic for some reason i'll take that opportunity i think of all the people we've had on the show he's the person that's most fit to answer the question about the microbiome because he probably understands the gut anyway we'll get into the definition of wisdom uh, from the dictionary have a look the quality of having experience knowledge and good judgment the quality of being wise i like the phrase they've used there or the the, the sentence they've given as an example Listen to his words of wisdom. So the quality of having experience, knowledge, and good judgment. The quality of being wise. So according to the dictionary, wisdom is the quality of having good knowledge, uh, good judgment, and experience. So experience, knowledge, judgment, when you combine these, they produce wisdom. This is according to the world's definition of wisdom. Um, the dictionary's definition of wisdom. Let's look at the Bible's uh, definition of wisdom from the book of James. Uh, this is James chapter 3 verse 13 to, to 17. Who is wise and understanding among you? Let him show by good conduct that his works are done in meekness and wisdom. But if you have bitter envy and self-seeking in your hearts, do not boast and lie against the truth. This wisdom does not descend from above, but is earthly, sensual, and demonic. For where envy and self-seeking exist, confusion and every evil thing are there. But the wisdom that is from above is first pure, then peaceable, gentle, willing to yield, full of mercy, good fruits, without partiality, and without hypocrisy. Is that the correct way to say that last word? Hypocrisy, without hypocrisy. Yeah, I think that's the way. Hypocrisy. So this is the Bible's description of wisdom. It differentiates wisdom. It, it, it classifies it in, 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 two, in two classes. There's wisdom that's from above and there's earthly wisdom. Earthly wisdom is sensual. It's demonic. Okay, and it's, it's, it's self-seeking. Uh, earthly wisdom is, is, is earthly. It's sensual and demonic. So you may, you may know some people that are wise according to the matters of the earth. Some people are wise according to the matters of the senses. They are sensually wise. So earthly wisdom is sensual, meaning it appeals to the senses. There's some people that are so wise in the affairs of how to, uh, how to talk to ladies, some gentlemen. They can tell you the tricks to the trade. If you want to impress a lady with your words, say it like this, and it works. And there are some people that are wise with uh, how to look good, how to be beautiful, how to beautify your skin. There are some people that are good with, that are wise with music. They, are, they know just what tunes and what beats will uh, work together to produce the best quality of sound. There are people that are wise with those things that appeal to your tastes. Uh, they are sensually wise. They are concerned with the matters that deal with the body and how the body feels. And this kind of wisdom is earthly wisdom. The Bible here distinguishes. The Bible says there is wisdom that is from above, but there is also earthly wisdom. And earthly wisdom is that wisdom which is sensual and demonic. And you see, the Bible groups it together, sensual and demonic, because the wisdom that is appealing to the senses is very closely knit to demonic wisdom. Because there is wisdom that looks very wise but is not and it's inspired by demons but it's almost indistinguishable with with sensual wisdom because they are intermingled they are they are married the demons seek those things which please the body because they look for bodies to inhabit so 
the only way they can express their desires, the only way they can satisfy the things that they can't satisfy in their spiritual form because they don't have a body, they'll satisfy through your body. Therefore, sensual wisdom appeals uh, to demons and intermingles with demonic wisdom. But wisdom that is from above may not be what men may consider to be. Uh, to be wisdom. That's why the Bible in the book of Corinthians says that the wisdom of God is the foolishness of men. For the wisdom of God is far above our conception, our understanding of wisdom. You see, I talked to you earlier about dimensions and how we are three-dimensional beings living in a four-dimensional world. This is scientific knowledge, obviously. And you see, science seems to prove what the Bible uh, teaches us, that really God is hidden and he should be sought out. And in seeking wisdom, we only get to discover that nature reveals God and all the things that play uh, together to form what we know as existence all play together to uh, prove God and his existence and his intelligent design in all things. And this is what the Bible in the book of Romans teaches us. So now, if you are a three-dimensional being living in a four-dimensional world, then imagine, because God exists outside of everything we consider a dimension. Remember, three-dimensional beings, we can perceive height, length, and width. That makes us three-dimensional beings. Everything we look at, we look at from these dimensions. But we live in a four-dimensional world which includes time. Time is the fourth dimension, right? This is scientific knowledge. Um, and according to Einstein. But God being the source, the Alpha and Omega, beginning and end, lives outside of these perceptions. He is not locked to height, uh, length, width, and time. The fact that we are three-dimensional beings means we can't perceive the fourth dimension, time. But because God is the multi-dimensional one, he perceives time with his senses. The way you see height, God sees time. He understands it the way you understand depth. That's how he understands time. So because he's looking at it from outside, he understands how every one of your actions can lead to a different possibility and outcome. And he understands that out of your five decisions, it could leave, lead to five or 20 different possibilities and outcomes. God is able to perceive that with his senses because he lives in the highest of dimensions. All that we perceive. In order to make you understand this, imagine a fish that lives in the water and that can only perceive um, length and breadth so it moves to and fro left and right it can go to the side and the other side it can go back and forth a fish living in the sea perceives life on only uh, two dimensions right for example this means that a fish does not know that there is a dimension called height. You see, it can't measure height. It doesn't even know that height exists. So if you take a fish out of the water and bring it into our world, because the, the water is a world on its own, that's a different world. But we take a fish out of the world and bring it into, into our world. We will be extremely strange beings to the fish because we walk upwards. And the fish will be shocked to, under, to see and perceive an upward direction, an upward dimension, height and depth. That will be inconceivable. There is a possibility that the fish won't even see us when it looks at us because it can't perceive that dimension of height. This means that we live in a world where there could be beings around us who are existing in dimensions higher than our perception. For them, when they look at the passage of time, they are able to walk into the past, the present, and the future because time is actually something you can measure and see or hear or taste. You can perceive it with your senses. But we can't perceive time with our senses. We need to control it by our war clocks. 
So now imagine God who looks beyond the realm of every dimension we can perceive. God, in his knowledge alone of what the outcomes of our lives can be and the pasts of our lives can be, and his knowledge of the present based on just his knowledge that constitutes the highest level of wisdom for us. So what I mean is before God even gets into the dimension called wisdom for him, when he's still in knowledge and experience, that translates to us as, as wisdom. And I'm giving you this explanation. I'm breaking this down to you because I want you to understand that when the Bible describes wisdom that is from above, it may sound like foolishness in our world because our perceptions differ. And this is why the Bible says God confounds uh, uses the foolish thing of this world to confound the wise. Now, having this understanding of wisdom, that there is a wisdom that's earthly and sensual and demonic, and there's a wisdom that's from above, which is peaceable, and which is, you know, described here in the book of uh, James, good fruits, full of mercy, willing to yield, gentle, without partiality and without hypocrisy. Now that we understand that there is this wisdom that comes from God that carries these attributes, we can begin to have a better understanding of what this gift called word of wisdom uh, is. Now, before we get into what the gift of word of wisdom is, one last important thing for you to note is that the gift of word of wisdom, wisdom in itself is a character, a characteristic of Jesus Christ. So Jesus is sharing with himself, with us, a part of himself when he gives us wisdom by his spirit. Let me read you a scripture in the book of uh, Colossians chapter 2 verse 2 to 3. That their hearts may be encouraged, being knit together in love, and attaining to all riches of the full assurance of understanding, to the knowledge of the mystery of God, both of the Father and of Christ, in whom are hidden all the treasures of knowledge and wisdom. All the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. So the Bible here is telling us that in Christ is hidden all treasures of wisdom and knowledge. Every single speck of wisdom and knowledge is hidden inside Christ. And so remember Jesus said, what is the Father is mine and what is mine I give uh, to the Spirit and he gives to you for he shall not speak of his own accord but everything he hears he shall give so when the holy spirit gives us this gift of word of wisdom he is taking from christ who is the fullness who is in whom is hidden all treasures of wisdom and knowledge now let me give you an example of jesus christ exercising this gift called the word of wisdom and i'll explain to you just just what it is matthew chapter 10 verse 18 to 20 you will be brought before governors and kings for my sake as a testimony to them and to the Gentiles. But when they deliver you up, do not worry about how or what you should speak, for it will be given to you in that hour what you should speak. For it is not you who speak, but the spirit of your father who speaks in you. Now, this scripture uh, shows us two gifts in play. Jesus exercising two gifts. You see, Jesus is the marker. He is the answer sheet. The one, the example of how to relate to God in this new dispensation of, a, of, of the Holy Spirit. Now, Jesus being the answer sheet, the marker, we need to take examples. So we'll, we'll try to base all our examples on Jesus' ministry alone. So there are two gifts that we see at play here when Jesus is explaining to them the events that will come to pass. And the first gift is the gift of prophecy. Jesus says, you will be brought before governors and kings for my sake as a testimony to them and to the Gentiles. This was definitely going to happen. It was a futuristic event that Jesus was predicting. And that's what we call prophecy, but that's not what we're focusing on. The next gift that was displayed here is the word of wisdom. He said, but when they deliver you up, do not worry about what or how you should speak, for it will be given to you in that very hour. Jesus there gave them a word a futuristic word which was instructive it carried an instruction so the way word of wisdom works is that it works with the other prophetic gifts it could work with a word of knowledge or it could work with a word of prophecy but it manifests itself in god 
giving you a prophetic insight in what direction you should take or how you should act. And so the gift of word of wisdom is a momentary glimpse into God's wisdom on a particular issue. And so you will find that when people are ministering the prophetic, they may give instructive words that will produce a desired result. And this is what is considered as the word of wisdom. And this is us digging into the treasures of the fullness of Christ. Isn't God good? Isn't God good? Once again, if you're not subscribed, please subscribe, hit that notification bell and share. Um, the show is available Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays, 50, 20 hours Central African time. And you can listen to the podcast on Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts, and Spotify. Amazing Minds, Zambia's first late night show next week. We'll get into uh, the next gift, which is the gift of word of knowledge. I hope you have been edified and you have learned something. If you have uh, learned something or if you have questions, please leave it in the in the comment section and we'll be able to address that much later. Um, I'll see you on Monday with Chofia in studio. For now, ciao. Hey, like what you see? I know you do. Hit the button below to subscribe and don't forget to hit the notification bell. Ciao.